Hey, good good evening, everybody. Welcome to 20 Sides to Every Story. Hope you're uh, staying out of the snow, wherever you are. Uh, it's just starting to come down here, um, which is a good enough excuse to be sitting in and playing some D&D. Uh, tonight's game, uh, we are playing Isle of Dread, um, which is uh, an old adventure. Uh, came in the expert rules... Um, from the, the days of the D&D &D Basic Expert uh, box sets that you could get. Uh, this was the default adventure in the Expert, uh, but uh, we are not playing it in that rule set. We're playing it in 5th edition rules. Uh, Goodman Games um, publishes a number of these books. It's a, a series of uh, products that they call Original Adventures Reincarnated. Um, and this is a game that we we play uh, to thank our uh, Patreon supporters and our Twitch subscribers. Uh, enjoy, invite invite our audience to uh, have some fun with us. So last year we we had a lot of fun playing Into the Borderlands, and we exhausted all that content. And now we've moved on to this, and uh, we're gonna get into where our story is. This is a continuation of the Into the Borderlands campaign, but. Um, if you are watching us for the first time and uh, you've never uh, been a part of a D and D game, or you're 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 seeing what we're doing and you think it looks like a lot of fun, uh, we would we would encourage you to support the channel so that you you can do that. Um, basically, how it works is um, every month I put out uh, sign ups to allow our community to sign up for the games. We allow the Patreon, uh, folks to have first dibs to sign up for games. And then, um, we allow our Twitch subscribers to, uh, jump on the wait list of those, uh, sign ups. And, uh, if there's space, if space allows, then they can get in on the game. Um, it's pretty simple. The, the folks that are on the Patreon, uh, thirty dollars, you get unlimited signups. If you uh, support at the fifteen dollar level, you can sign up for two games at a time. And uh, if you support at the five dollar level, we let you sign up for one game at a time. And you can put yourself on as many wait lists as you want, as long as you can commit to the game. Um, and that's how that works. Um, if you um, want to uh, hang out with us uh, when we're not on online you can do so by joining our discord server um, so I'll pop that link into the chat there uh, we've got folks on at all times uh, hanging out talking about uh, D&D our hobby um, in life and I don't know Stardew Valley seems to be a popular topic in the discord right now which is fine by me because I, I enjoy that game quite a bit uh, but yeah we're a community of nerds. Come and talk nerd stuff with us. Um, so, uh, let's see. In terms of schedule, uh, this is not the only uh, community campaign game we have going on this weekend. We have another one that will be happening on Sunday morning at um, 10 a.m., I think. Uh, I have to double-check my schedule myself, I guess. But if, if you're like me and you get confused... <laughs> what's going on every day you can go to the website uh 20sideseverystory.com uh that's where our calendar uh of events is posted so on any, any given day you can jump on there uh take a look at the streaming schedule and see what we got on deck uh for the day week month um etc so all right uh let's see let's uh let's bring us all up to speed with what is happening this is kind of in some ways a new campaign but it's also a continuation of the story that we had going on in season one of the community campaign um in the first episode of season two uh we learned that the church of pelor uh the god of the sun uh commissioned a ship called the raging bull to voyage out to the isle um you see the map uh that we got uh queued up for you this is the isle of dread and the reason for the voyage was to deliver and destroy the artifacts of Vecna, which were recovered at the end of Season 1, the Book of Vile Darkness and the Hand of Vecna. These two items were secretly stored on board this ship and uh, were sent under a veil of deception that this ship was actually uh, delivering convicts 
to be sent for exile um, to the remote areas and islands of the Southern Sea. Um, this is not something that would have uh, raised too many red flags. This, that would have been a common way to punish convicts, and so uh, it, it, it gave a pretty convenient excuse for um, how to how to secretly uh, get those items uh, out this far without drawing the attention, um, undue attention to them. Um, the voyage was basically a week-long trip that brought the ship to the Isle of Dread. Um, uh, that was a, that was what our whole uh, first episode was about, was about the journey, and they weathered storms, they dealt with a uh, potential mutiny situation, and then finally uh, we had a, you know, a very generous uh, member of the audience decided that we needed a kraken to be involved and so they donated uh the requisite uh experience points the viewer rewards to uh make that happen so the, the ship uh was attacked by a kraken um the captain of the ship uh captain falthren who was a minotaur he ordered everyone to abandon the ship and swim to shore basically everyone was uh the ship had was that that close and um and this is where the, the story begins is is dozens and dozens of crew members and even some of the uh the convicts that were aboard the ship are swimming the shore and uh, reaching the sandy beach right where the d20 is uh there's actually not too many places where it would have been possible to uh to easily climb um, onto the aisle M much of this uh shoreline of the isle is kind of mountainous terrain um but for there was a bit of fortune i suppose in where you uh where this kraken decided to attack and so uh we've got four four such characters selvin uh Taragic, uh grim and magnus uh you're all s uh, swimming to shore alongside all of these others um you can see Captain Falthren uh, himself is making his way up the sandy uh, beaches, and it is hot. Um, you can almost feel like steam irradiating right off of your body as uh, the water, the seawater um, upon you is evaporating rather rapidly. It's probably 95 degrees. Uh, it's a clear sky, um, so you can see... Um, um, the sun is just blinding as it bears down on you. It's probably like 10 a.m., relatively late morning. Um, and you can see that Captain Falthren, um, he's looking out at the, the devastation to his ship, the Raging Bull. Um, you see the, the tentacles of the Kraken are ripping and tearing the ship apart. Captain Falthren is staring out there. You almost... Not kind of a strange thing to see him misty-eyed, but he does seem like there's a, a a look of sadness in his eyes as he sees the ship being tear, torn apart. Uh, but just then, as that is uh, happening, um, you see this huge bird, a rock, an R O C, uh, a bird the size of a titan, uh, kind of swoops down out of the sky and grabs hold of the hull of the ship and like rips it from the kraken's tentacle and grabs hold of that and is storing um above where you all are at uh you can all give me a uh dexterity saving throw as this happens everyone except uh cliff your character is not not quite there yet oops you know i'm looking for a 10 or higher but we got what i give you Disadvantage. That was weird. It might be because of your armor. Um, pretty sure I'm proficient in all armor, so I'm not mistaken. But some armors uh, impose a disadvantage on on uh, dexterity checks. Fair enough. That's my guess is why. Um, what type of armor are you wearing? Uh, heavy armor. Okay. Yeah. That's. Uh, is it probably like why? Is it like plate or? Uh, it's just chainmail. Chainmail, yeah, I'm pretty sure chainmail is disadvantage. Disadvantage. Yeah. 
Oh boy. Although that wouldn't be. That would only be on a stealth check. Stealth right? check. Yeah, it's just showing up that it came up as armor is not proficient. That's what's weird. Okay, oh, that's are right. you proficient in medium armor? I'm proficient in all armors. If I'm not mistaken, mm. Pelvins are. Uh, eh. uh, go ahead and just roll. I'll just roll a d20, maybe. That'll probably be yeah, go ahead easier. and do that. We'll have to fix why that's happening. Okay, so you make it. So everybody uh, dodges out of the way, because as, as the the rock uh, is bringing this half of this hull of this ship um, over your heads, pieces of debris and, and uh, wreckage are dropping down on your heads. Uh, but you all manage to uh, safely evade that. And... Um, Oh, we've got some items in the store that are sold out. Yeah, I probably need to restock that. Uh, when we take a break, I'll do that. Um, so uh, you all kind of dodge out of the way of all this debris and whatnot, and you see Captain Falthrin is ordering everybody to uh, make their way um, further inland. He, he kind of cries out, Everyone move inland! We can't risk that thing moving closer! And... Uh, you can see uh, the scores of the crew uh, heading up the beach. Um, I don't know, the beach probably extends, I don't know, 150 feet or so, um, and there's a slight incline in the uh, in the terrain, and it reaches up to uh, the point where you can see um, the tree line of a jungle. You see lots of tropical-looking trees, palm trees and tar, uh, great big tar uh, trees. It's kind of a rainforest type feel on the edge there. Um, as you are all moving and running together um, to get get to safer uh, uh, place uh, out of reach of the Kraken, um, you're looking at one another and maybe conversing or talking a bit. Um, why don't this would be a good time for us to introduce uh, the characters that we've got with us, uh, minus Cliff's character. So, um, if each of you could maybe give us uh, your character name, give us your class, your race, um, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, why it is that you found yourself to be on that ship that is now now gone to the seas. Uh, let's start with Selvin. Uh, my name is Selvin Thenenson. I am a white dragonborn paladin of Pelor. Um, I find myself here mainly because growing up, I wasn't originally a paladin. I grew up as a uh, with a roving group of barbarians, and uh, I decided to leave that life behind me and uh, seek the greater light of Pelor. And I find myself here because I was sent here on a mission. And I'll stop right there for now. All right. Next up, we have Tragic. Um, <clears throat> so Tragic is a criminal who is just in survival mode and is happy, um, is happy to have gotten his freedom on the ship and hopes that it remains so now that we're on the island. All right, we next up we have uh, Grim. I am Grim, a variant tiefling fighter. I ha was a pirate once upon a time and am currently looking for a new crew. All right, and then we have Magnus. I'm Father Magnus, and I am a cleric, a human. Uh, I worship uh, Tritheron, who is the, cleric, or the god of liberty and retribution. I am here for a special mission assigned. And that's all I can say at this point. All right. Um, so we, um, as you're you're making your way, you eventually uh, get yourself up to kind of 
right where the the tree line of the jungle is and uh captain Falthrin, um he's he's ordering his crew uh you can see he's he's giving them tasks um um and, and at some point he points to the four of you and he, he hails you to uh, approach and he says listen up crew listen up gang we none of us predicted this current situation and i have no solid answers for getting us through this safely as of this particular moment we have no supplies no food no water and no shelter the knowledge that we have about this isle is scant at best all of it originating from the log of a long-gone captain that himself had bad luck on his one voyage here. The only way that we will make it through this first night alive is by cooperating and working together. Everyone must do their part. You four, I'm going to give you the task of finding us shelter. When we were on the ship, I could see that there... There's a range of mountains just beyond that jungle there. I know it seems a bit risky, but I think the only shot that we have, we don't have enough time to build a proper shelter that'll take us through the night. And My hope is that maybe there's some caverns there that we could stay in just for the night before give us enough time to really come up with a, a, an alternative plan for survival might be the best that we can hope for and uh, as as he is conversing with you um, suddenly his gaze turns upward and you all uh, feel the presence of a shadow kind of drift over your group and you also look up to see what it is that is blocking the radiant sunlight from filtering down upon you when you turn your gaze up you see the large frame of what seems to be a dragon passing overhead. And you can see Captain Falthrin, who had been pretty uh, strong, pretty resolved the entire time uh, he'd been on the ship. You see him give a gulp in uh, kind of trepidation over, <laughs> over the fact that you are in an island that has not just a rock, but it seems also a dragon. He says, Whoa, thanks for the gems, man! Hey, Winston, thanks for the cheer. Thanks for feeding the gem door. It looks like he's getting rather full. <laughs> um, so uh, Captain Falthorn turns his gaze to the four of you and he says, What say you? Do you feel that you're up for the task? I mean, I'd rather not have to face down a dragon or a rock any day soon, so I'm all for it. It has to be done. You have my word. We will find a place. And uh, from the map, uh, he basically points you directly west. He says that... Um, he even pulls out the map, and he says, you know, he kind of shows you... It, it, it looks like that, that Captain Barbarossa that we got this map from, he too saw some mountains out there beyond the jungle. If you head that direction, I feel that you will have some luck. What I will do in the meantime, I'm going to order my crew here. I can see some of the wreckage, some of the salvage, some of the wreckage that was dropped from that that terrifying bird that ripped half that, was willing to go head to head with that kraken and and take what remains of the raging bull. I can see some of the wreckage is coming up shore. We're going to scavenge through what we can, see if we can uh, requisition or salvage some supplies that we could use. If you do find a cavern, light a fire. It'll help us to track you down. Shall be done. Now, did uh, the first mate survive this ordeal? Uh, yes. The first mate was uh, G. Clutterbuck, the halfling. Mm -hmm. The very uh, kind of naive, uh, innocent uh, for a, a first mate of such a vessel, but he is, he is 
uh, sitting down, um, kind of shuddering, not from cold, but from kind of shell shocked from this ordeal that you've all been through. What about our lovely uh, dwarven compatriot who uh, loves her insults? Uh, yes, Kilvara Dirty Bones is um, doesn't seem too affected by what has happened. Um, she's she uh, it, actually when you were coming upon uh, the captain, it seemed like she was one of the people that he was directing as kind of a, a taskmaster for. Um, salvaging some of the supplies. So you can see she's already heading back to the, the beach to start um, picking through some of the wreckage. He, she uh, kind of gives you a thumbs up and she says, Good luck out there! Find us a good place! A dry place to rest! All right, so um, I kind of meet the eye of the first mate and kind of give him like a, like, I'm going to go do this now. And hey, like, we're both alive, kind of look. And I kind of look at our team here, and are we going to start going? Uh, give me 10 minutes, and I'll be ready. What do you need 10 minutes for? Taking off this very heavy and hot armor. I go to assist. Thank you. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll get to what all that uh, means in a moment, so our audience understands. I was explaining some of it to the crew here. Um, but as you're... Yeah, it's, yeah sweltering heat, you're... The, the, the sea... Uh, you're drenched in the sea water, uh, but it is quickly intermingling with your own sweat as it is a, a sweltering tropical heat on this isle. Um, as you, you know, you, you do that, you, you, uh, provide some relief for yourself by relinquishing that heavy armor and, uh, you start to approach the jungle, um, and you begin to notice that the palm trees that stretch across the tree line, um, they're humongous. Um, many of the, the genus of, uh, trees here are similar to things that maybe you've read about in books or seen, um, maybe, maybe even looked up. Uh, what you could expect before your voyage, but these these trees are four times the size that you were expecting. Um, and their trunks are are very thick. Uh, you know, you could almost you could almost see uh, a person maybe hollowing out one of these trunks and having a comfortable living space uh, right inside. They're so big. Um, so there's something. There's kind of this almost prehistoric uh, grandness to this aisle and the uh, the how grand all of the uh, foliage is. Um, as you uh, kind of enter through those trees, uh, you progress into the gloom of the jungle. Uh, it seems that the tree tops and the leaves of these mighty, the boughs of these mighty trees uh, don't allow much sunlight to come down. So you are in a dim light as you progress through um in the distance you can hear exotic birds um and other wildlife squawk and enthusiastic noises that echo out across the jungle air and the humidity is thick you could cut it with a sword um and sweat is just beating and pouring off of your unaccustomed faces um after some time uh you uh are making your way through the woods and you see this grand tortoise shell lying uh, in the middle of the, the forest floor. And this is where uh, Yaba, you, uh, you can hear you're inside your shell and you hear some movement coming in your direction. I am uh, listening and uh, keeping uh, track of, of where this sound is coming from. After all, I'm in a jungle and I 
many times hear animals approach and, and wander back into, uh, you know, wander away. So it's coming from your east. And you would guess it's probably some, maybe 30 feet away from you right now. So uh, the rest of you, Selvin, uh, Taraji, Grim, Magnus, you see this kind of odd uh, milestone here, or landmark here on the jungle floor? Is that a big turtle shell? I think it is. Take out long and well. Yeah, I'm taking my shirt bow out. I heard the turtle soup is pretty good. Could be good eats. I agree. Aiming at turtle shell. Is there a head out or anything? No, I believe I'm completely in my shell right now. Well, we're going to have to coax him out. All right. Maybe. <laughs> Does Whistle Firm come over? A whistle for a turtle, I guess. <laughs> I got a dagger. I could try to get that shell off. Yeah, maybe you should uh, see if you can pry him open and we can probably Sounds feed the good. crew with a turtle that size. Magnus puts his bow away, takes out his two daggers, and starts walking towards the turtle. You All cover right. me with that bow. So you hear footsteps approaching there, Yava. A lot of Can I help you? What? I you said, can I, can I help you? Are you lost? No, no. We're on the island where we're supposed to be. I'm going to kill that turtle over there. Uh, I believe you're talking about me. I, I just look at it confused. Turtles don't talk. I am a turtle, and I do talk. Um, Can you tell us where we could might where we might get some food, or is there a water source, a clean water source around here? Uh, where there was a wreck, and we have a lot of guys back there who are going to need some water soon. I can bring you to my camp as long as you don't think you're going to have me for dinner. Any more of you there? Um, no, my only companion has uh, passed away sh uh, a short time back. I'm sorry to hear that. Was your companion given the last rites? Uh, no. I can. He was of the he was of the lizard folk variety. I don't think uh, he subscribed uh, to the, that thing. Okay, you have food at your camp. I uh, I will pop out of my shell and stand up. So you all uh, see a bipedal, follow me this uh, way, tortoise man. Um, and I'll uh, medium, lead them medium back size. to to where I have a uh, um, a camp, and it's it's there's a small small uh, cave that uh, that provides uh, shelter to. Wait, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Uh, it's not. It's not really a cave. It's it's kind of a hollowed out area by the by the uh, side of a, a a cliff there okay okay i can doesn't I go can, doesn't, I, doesn't go back in or anything <laughs> okay what well, i i can work with that i suppose it's, it's more of a big overhang type you know sure so you're gonna lead them to your uh your small one person cavern <laughs> No, we had two people there, or two individuals there before. 
All right, all right. Jeez. <laughs> Got Cliff was world building over there. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, you're going to you're going to take them to your home and you're going to do some foraging in, in in the familiar terrain. Is that right? Yeah, I probably have uh, some supplies there that I've gathered uh, from time to time, so I can provide them with uh, something to eat if they're hungry, but I'll have to go back out and get more uh, if uh, okay. If they need further meals. This seems uh, like a good time meals. to step in and tell you how all of that works, uh, because it won't be so easy. Um, there will be checks involved. Um, so... <clears throat> And this will be true. Basically, we're doing a um, uh, hex crawl. So there's going to be some rules that we have in terms of how uh, we manage all of that. Uh, basically, on any given day, the group is going to um, set a travel pace. Um, there are three speeds that you can choose. You could choose to travel at a slow pace. Uh, traveling at this pace will allow you to travel three hexes a day. Um, while traveling at this pace, you would have advantage on all checks to perceive danger, and all hostile creatures suffer disadvantage while trying to track or detect you. Um, any foraging checks that you make throughout the day are made at no penalty. So that's, that's the slow pace. You can travel at a normal pace. This will allow you to travel four hexes per day. All of your foraging checks are at disadvantage, and there is uh, no penalty or advantage w in regards to uh, seeing things or being found and those types of uh, things. Um, you can also travel at a fast pace. If you do that, you can travel five hexes per day. Um, but when you're at a when you're doing the fast pace, your uh, your perception checks. Um, are at disadvantage. Any checks to track you or find you or be perceived by enemies are at advantage, and you're not allowed to do foraging checks. Uh, some terrain throughout the map, uh, such as mountains, would count do as double movement. Uh, any questions about that? Then the, the, so. the second piece of that is uh, each day you can, as long as you're doing either the, the 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 slow pace or the normal pace, you can do foraging checks. Um, while you're here on the Isle of Dread, you require one pound of food and two gallons of water a day to survive. Um, if you don't. If you don't uh, consume uh, those thresholds, then you'll have to make a uh, check uh, to avoid exhaustion. Uh, so this is the exhaustion check. If if you were if you were wearing heavy armor, you would have to make the check every hour you were traveling, and so and it would be at disadvantage. So that's bad call. I think most characters are going to decide that's much too risky uh, to do. Um, if you have to do a a exhaustion check and you are wearing because you didn't have enough food or water throughout the day uh your exhaustion check wearing medium armor would be at disadvantage um no penalty for light or no armor so the way that the foraging checks will work is each character gets to perform the check it's a dc 10 survival check uh if you make it this yields 1d6 plus your wisdom modifier in pounds of food or gallons of water. Um, I'll let you choose. You can you know, mix it up however uh, it plays out for you. Um, if you get a critical success, if you get a nat 20 on your roll, um, it'll result in double the yield. And do we have anybody that has the wanderer feat? Or it's not a feat, it's a background feature. Uh, 
Uh, I'll say this because we got some folks in the audience who play in this game, but the the Wanderer feature is crazy and just says basically you can feed all the people in the party and uh, that takes some of the, the risk out of the game. So I'm going to modify that rule and say if you got the Wanderer feat, um, anytime that you have a success on the on the check, it's a critical. So it, it basically, if you, the Wanderer person with the wanderer trait uh if they make a success it's always considered a critical and it always doubles the yield so as you are setting out what pace would you like to make or set for yourselves guys i don't know that we want to go too fast too far since we have to move in wherever we wherever we find home we're going to have to move an entire crew here and whatever they find from the debris. So maybe we want to take it slow through here and let's not walk in on animal dens or anything crazy. Let's take it slow. I'm going to have to agree with that. I'd say I really don't want to run into a dragon any day soon. So I think so would probably be your best option right now. We have sailors on, on the beach that don't have any food. Can it really waste time? Do we know how like far the mountains are away from our like our current point, or is it just there's too much foliage to even see? Uh, make me a perception check. Let's see where are you are. There you are. Twelve. You're not sure. It's at at it, it could be a full day's travel away. Yeah, but yes. How far are the mountains from here? Uh, I've never been to the mountains. Um, Do you travel I, like a turtle? I, I I stay here. Um, I've never traveled around the island. How did you get here? I was marooned. I was tossed off the ship that I was riding on because I objected to them tossing over a stowaway. I was tossed over uh, as well. And so I sank like a rock and walked over to the island. This is a piece of information where the mountains are. I'll say that Yaba knows. Um, you know that it is, uh, basically it's two hexes away. So it's, it's about, uh, trying to remember what that distance is. I think it's about 12 miles. So it's like a half day's journey. But you guys are getting a late start too, so. I'll go at the speed that you guys say, but I don't think we can dilly dally. I'm going to have to agree with Father Magus on that. I think probably a normal pace would be fine. If we go too fast, we could miss something obvious. Yeah, I don't want to go fast, but I don't want to dilly dally and look at every shop that comes along i'm for a normal pace all right so you uh move further into the jungle um i'm gonna reveal a little bit more of the map for you all um and as you are progressing through a few more hours of travel um you uh emerge upon um, a site that where there is uh, quite a bit of sunlight, actually, that is pouring down and um, kind of almost creates this halo effect upon uh, this patch of raised earth, uh, kind of a small hill. Um, the entirety of it is maybe maybe 100 feet or so across, and uh, this small hill kind of raises up to a site where um, completely... Um, 
unobstructed by vegetation, just kind of a grassy hill. And upon the, the, the top of the hill, you can see there seem to be eight massive stone menhirs that are covered in moss that stand in a circle around a ninth stone. Seems to be some kind of a, a monument or a marker or um, monument to something. Uh, you're not, not too sure what, what purpose it might have, but um, it stands out as you come across it. And it's kind of out in the open, not in the vegetation. Yeah, it's almost like you've just found a clearing. Okay, so we would expose ourselves if we go out there. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm traveling with the group then? Well, I guess it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't know. I they hadn't been invited or or asked to go, so I didn't know if oh, they'd uh, maybe I'm object if I started like, following them. All. <laughs> it sounded like you were trying to lead them to uh, at least where your home is. Oh, I th I thought we had been there already. I'm sorry. All right. Well, well let's yeah. let's iron this out. What what exactly is happening? Well, I thought I thought we had led them to my home. It wasn't going to be too far away, but hey, yeah, but you seem to be an outcast, just like us on this island. You want to come with us and find shelter with us together as a group? Uh, sure. Uh, where are you headed? Right now, we were given instructions to go towards the mountains in hopes of finding a cave for our uh, stranded party back on shore. Uh, okay, but I think my camp is probably closer. Your camp house about 50 to 60 people? That many? No. <laughs> That's why we're going to the mountains. Okay. You're welcome to come with us if you want, or you can stay here. I think we'd prefer if you came with us so you can identify some of the dangers of this island. Well, I haven't been around the island, but I do know some of the plant life now that I've been here a while. Uh, I will come. I've never been to the mountains. I'd like to see those. Okay, that's settled. Let's go. To the mountains. <laughs> uh. So uh, <clears throat> you you uh, successfully have conscripted Yabba Dabba to come with you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you travel and you, you've come upon this uh, this clearing where these standing stones are. Uh through my time in the uh, Church of Pelor, does this look like an altar to him at all in any capacity? Or any sort of religious um, altar at all? This uh, um, occurring? Make a religion check. Uh, 17. Um, it doesn't look like an altar in terms of like a traditional your culture where you're from you know you might think of like a you know uh, buildings and uh, maybe a place to pray and things like that this doesn't seem like it's really set up for such a purpose but you can't really be sure from your vantage point but your your hunch is that that's maybe not what this is I relay this to the party so what do y'all think? Do you want to investigate this or keep moving towards the mountains? Could be something on top. Maybe leads downward. Underneath it, maybe. Maybe we should send one person up to scout it. If all of us get out in that meadow, we could be a good target for, say, a dragon. I could sneak out in that meadow. I'm kind of low to the ground and naturally stealthy. I'll try to keep you covered as long as I can with my longbow. 
All right. I so got a Got you. Tra- Tragic, you uh, can give me a stealth check as you progress out towards the hill. All right. Critical. So you uh, you uh, are able to kind of I don't know uh, stay low to the ground and and you're moving. Uh, even though you're you're very quiet, you're also very fast, and so. Uh, you're able to make it up to the top of that hill um, without, you don't notice anything having uh, spotted you, um, and you make your way up to the top of the hill, and you're standing right by these massive stone uh, pillars. Each of them is probably, they're they're not exactly even, but uh, the, the shortest one stands 8 feet tall, the tallest one 12 feet tall. That's kind of the, the range. And in the middle, there is a, a ninth pillar between them all and um yeah you notice that they're all heavily covered with this moss um can i investigate them or um search for anything that would be special about these are these just old statues are they like giving some kind of direction or sign that i'm missing um if there's writing or anything like that on them it's uh kind of obscured by the moss okay um if you want you can you can describe to me how you're checking this out so i'm kind of um uh, walking around, I have my dagger, and I'm kind of trying to like feel around. In my criminal criminal rogue days, I might have used my dagger to see if I can pry some rubies or gems out of something. But generally, trying to find some kind of device to it. Okay. Seeing like. So you feel around on the on the pillar and. Maybe you're trying to like clear off some of this moss so that you can read the runes. Um, as you do that, um, as your hand makes contact with the moss, you feel this burning sensation um, on the tips of your fingers. Um, you you take one point of damage from that, but that burning sensation is is prevalent. Um, you feel that it's, it's almost like a stinging nettle or something like that. And it's just growing and intensifying. Um, the rest of you, you can all see that Tragic, uh, as he was checking out that, that stone, uh, seems to be kind of like grabbing hold of his hand. Maybe a wince oh. of pain. Oh dear. <laughs> so am I able to, was it like actually grabbing me? Um, like, do I have to pull pull away from it? Uh, you you do. You pull away as soon as you feel it. Um, okay. It's just like, like, like it's poisonous or something. There, you know, just the contact, the oils on that on that moss uh, are are causing you to break out. Your whole hand is kind of blistering and and bleeding. Um, Yaba, anything that that you do? Um, I would, I would like to, uh, as soon as he gets out of the clearing, if he, if he gets back over here, I will take a look at his hand and, and I'm, I'm proficient in medicine and I have a herbalism kit. Uh, I might be able to help him out with, uh, that burning sensation. Okay. So you're, you're standing in the, in the tree line waiting to see what he does. Um, yeah. Selvin, anything that you would like to do? Uh, just keep a lookout, make sure no one's coming up on us as we're not looking. Uh, Grim, that, no th- else. I would like to climb a tree to get a little bit of a higher vantage point to look around. Okay, uh, give me a strength athletics check. Oh, 
Okay, 19, no problem. You you scale up a, a tree. Um, on this on this turn, we'll say with that roll, you get up like 20 feet up into a tree, and uh, are are in a vantage point. Uh, Magnus, anything that you would like to do? I'm gonna go get him. He may not have a lot of time. You guys keep watch. I'm gonna walk up and try to get him back here. Okay, so Magnus, you uh, make your way up the hill and uh, you get to where he's at. You can see that he's, you can see what, what he's looking at. He's looking down at his hand and it is, uh, it's like 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 a heavy gash or a wound and it's just spreading across his arm and blood is dripping down off of it onto uh, onto the terrain below your feet. Uh, hold still for a second, and I'm going to cast uh, Detect Poison. Not because I don't think there's poison there, but it helps me identify what type of poison it is. Okay. Right. Um... There's the um, Detect Poison spell. I put it in the chat for you. Okay, uh, obviously uh, you do detect poison, uh, not just um, within a coursing through his hand right now, but um, there's kind of a, you sense it all on uh, upon the, the stone men here, is the, just the moss detects as poisonous. Um, we will say that your, your use of this spell uh, also kind of gives you a clue as to what you might be able to do to stop it. Um, and you think that um, just a, a heavy application of water um, might do the trick on the contact where he made contact with it. Let's get you back to Yaba because he may know where we can go or what we can do to uh, make your hand feel better. Okay. I can't tell if there's anything with a statue. It could be... Nothing. It could be important. These. This... Make me a investigation check. Who? Uh, tragic. Okay. A uh, nine. Uh, you're not too sure. Uh, you you kind of re recoiled from the pain like rather quickly. Um. But. You did feel like some kind of a groove or something on the other side. Um, you end up taking an additional two points of poison damage as Magnus is trying to uh, uh, urge you to go down and see Yaba. Okay. So Don't uh, worry, I'll be with you. I'm going to walk back. Um, but like you said, I do feel like I felt something there. And maybe this plant was meant to protect, and um, so we're heading back to Yava to stop this pain and bleeding. All right, uh, Yava, you were telling me that you wanted to uh, have a hand at trying to uh, uh, help him out with that. If you'd like, you give me a medicine check. Can I help? I'm also proficient in medicine. Sure. Uh, Yaba, you can have advantage, so you don't need it, because you can't do it better than that does. role. Um, <laughs> so, as, as he comes down, uh, you you quickly uh, administer uh, some water on the, the contact wound, um, and you wrap it up with uh, some spare cloth that you have, and uh, Tarajik, you feel um, there's still some irritation there on your skin, but it the, the pain, that sharp pain, that stinging pain is... Uh, subsiding. It should be okay after a while. The swelling will go down. The stinging will stop. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm used to slinking around the cities. I'm not, I'm not made for the jungle life it seems there are lots of strange plants on this island or at least at least the part that i've seen but uh i'm sure they're covering the rest of the island as well Ooh. 
What did you see at that uh, altar? So I I can't tell for sure, but I can I can sense with my knife, and I was feeling in there. It seems like the plants are covering some ruins or maybe some writing. Um, it that it could be a dead end. It could be useless, or it could be you know, it could be something. You know, maybe it leads to some riches, but that doesn't help us survive this island. You didn't catch what the writing looked like, did you? I didn't. I didn't see any writing, so... But we could go up and try to cut that moss away. Or we could burn it away. Hmm, I don't, don't know if you'd want to have a fire in the open like that. I'd also have to disagree with the fire method, mainly because I'm pretty sure Captain Felthorn's waiting for a fire to let us know the cave is ready, or that we found one at least. That's so they just want to bring them all in here to their inevitable death. That is a good point. Maybe we can, if somebody has a bigger blade, I just have this dagger, maybe we can just kind of peel it off without touching it. I have a scimitar. I'd love to help, but uh, I have a ball and chain, more or less. It's not going to do much here. <laughs> a scimitar might be great. So uh, it sounds like what you want to do is you want to go up to the stone men here and just start with a, a blades, keeping it off, avoiding any uh, skin contact, start to peel this moss off of the stones and... Uh, you can easily do that, um, and as you do, it does reveal that there has been um, some kind of some kind of runes have been etched into the stonework of all of these uh, pillars, or I shouldn't call them pillars; these stone men here. Um, let's see. Anybody who is oh, oh well, one of you. You can select who you want it to be, but one of you can make a uh, nature check for me. One of Not you me. can make a history check if you would like. I got history. Anybody else got history? Um, this is not something that my character okay. be good at. Religion's more my forte, but uh, history is not really much of my specialty. Well, I'll roll history then. <laughs> okay. Look at that. So, 320s on the same 320s, Oh my goodness, this is good night. So, Magnus is a 24 stuff. on the history check. Uh, would someone like to do a uh, nature check? I'll do a nature check. See if you can get another 20. Oh, oh it's so close. <laughs> it's so close. Nature check. And allow this is another, kind of... Another person to make a survival check. Someone that hasn't I already do... done. I can do no, a survival you... check. Okay. Come on, 20. Ooh, oh, not really. Okay. So you got two out of the three. Um, so with the uh, uh, nature check, um, one thing that you are noticing, I think Tragic, you did that role. Um, all of these stones are of, of are volcanic rock, um, kind of maybe more of a granite uh, type type of rock. Um, the history check reveals that maybe at first, mo maybe most of you upon looking at these would have thought that they were hieroglyphics um, in the sense that they were a language or something like that. But as you are looking at the tiles that are depicted on the different men here's, um, you're getting the sense that it's not so much a language as it is maybe a map. Um, and the different tiles kind of uh, suggest mountains and bodies of water, 
hills, jungle, uh, that type of thing. Um, and in the center of all of these different tiles, there's one that sticks out, and it is uh, a, a tile that indicates um, fire. Like a flame. Is that one at the top of a mountain like? Like it may be the volcano? Um, maybe. Uh, it's definitely surrounded by tiles that look like mountains. Uh, I have a... I have some um, scrolls, and I'd like to take one and, and try to copy it down. Okay, uh, you can do that. So basically you've got one tile like in the center. I almost kind of imagine it as like, it probably looks something like, you know, those images that people make on like, in like Microsoft Word, <laughs> just like of little mm. symbols and things like that. Kind of maybe like looks a little bit like that with very crude looking uh, etchings and tiles. So in the center, you've got this thing that looks like a fire. And then that's surrounded by all sorts of little tiles and images of mountain. And then um, kind of like maybe below that are a bunch of tiles that look like um, jungle. And then the whole thing is surrounded by water. Like tiles that just little etches of waves. Is there any tile that would represent the location we're at right now? Like any tile that looks like it might be these stone statue things? No, there's not really that much differ differentiation other than those very general okay. characteristics. Um, and none okay. that seem to indicate like a stone circle or anything like that. Any tiles indicate a clearing? No. Okay. This won't really be much helpful. Do you wish to move on? I think it'd probably be best for us. Keep going. At least now, now they'll know what's here exactly, and not some evil monster in disguise. Who knows? All right, so you continue on. And uh, just for uh, your awareness, you know, any time that you uh, move a tile on the hex, I reveal all of the tiles surrounding the tile that you just moved into. Um, so you uh, eventually, a few more hours pass. Um, you, I think, chose a normal pace. Is that correct? So you've you've moved your two tiles. You you'd be able to move one more, but uh, you're you're coming out of the jungle now, and uh, you're there's there's a little bit of flat land ahead of you as you're emerging from the very the heavy, thick air of that uh, of the jungle, and you're coming out and ahead of you you can see uh, the the kind of subtle slope upward um, that eventually translates into a mountain range that you can see um, ahead of you. Um, you're sort of to the south west of where you're emerging from. You can see that there is uh, the beginnings of a river um, that seems to head off into uh, the mountains. And... Uh, as you're giving a visual scan, uh, you could all give me a perception check. You're probably probably scanning the mountains to see if you can catch sight of maybe a cavern or any entrances that might. Oh, okay. It's a 17, a second 17. So, uh, Tragic and Grim, you see, um, you know, uh, some distance away up. Kind of, there's like a, a ledge that you see, you estimate that maybe um, 
there's no visible like switchback or walkway that makes its way up to this ridge, but it, it kind of pops out of the side of the uh, mountain facing, and there's definitely like a cavern atop it. You guess it's pretty. It'd be um, you know a climb to get up there. You have to do some rock climbing, but um, it's not too far. Definitely uh, possible to make your way to that cavern. Guys, there appears to be a cavern up there. And it looks like there might be a river cutting through these mountains. Maybe that could be our water source. Um, do I do I see a river? Yeah. Um, okay. Looks like it's coming into our tile. I can't tell because of the D20. Um, so maybe we should climb up there and see if we have a possible, even a place for the evening. What do you say, Dion? Be careful. There may be wild animals living in it. Well, we I see a possible water source, a possible location for overnight stay, and and uh, some wild animals might be some possible dinner. There's a good chance there are wild animals up there since it's so close to a water supply. I don't think we have a choice. We have to check it out. I agree. Yes. I mean, we got yes. to go with rolling out, has, I'm sure. It has good possibilities. So you all begin to make your way over in that direction, and um, uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, uh, you you get to right at the base of this, um, this outcropping. Um, to climb it, uh, be a DC 15 strength athletics check. Not me. Why am I disadvantaged? This is weird. It's your armor again. I'm wearing medium armor. And that's I gotta figure out what this is doing. It's saying you're not proficient with the armor. Even though I think I should be in college proficient with all armor, so I'm not mistaken. Yes, I agree. I don't know why it's saying that. Yeah, it's just something about maybe when your character got created, uh something didn't come through oh i see why i didn't select the star that's next to my armor whoops okay <laughs> so uh, you, you, you can re-roll that not even not even better <laughs> nobody made so, it so so nobody <laughs> made it um uh, oh no tragic and grim really didn't make it um <laughs> So there's there's kind of a variance on the failure of this check. Um, so those of you that uh, failed by 10, if you had a 10 or more, uh, you just take three points of damage as you fall uh, maybe 15 feet or so. Uh, those of you, some of you see Grim and Tarajik. You both take 10 points of damage. You fall a more considerable amount of damage. Um, so I... Oh, did I get healed? Otherwise, I'm unconscious. I was going to ask you beforehand, before we go up the mountain, if you want me to fix your arm up a little bit. I can just... I was going to take a game. Tragic takes a tumble and knocks himself out cold. Oh, boy. I'm going to go over and just cast the little cure wounds on him. Uh, there you go. All right, so you bring him back uh, conscious. Thank you. Uh, oh, that's weird. It's not adding my charisma. That's weird. I'm going to cast cure light wounds on Grim. Uh, who else is uh, in need of healing? I'll always take more healing. I have just took nine wounds, and I have thirteen max damage. So. You should be healing in like two more, because I don't know why it's not adding my charisma bonus to my heal. So you should have healed a six instead of four. 
Or unless I'm just completely mm. dumb and just Cure Wounds just doesn't do that. Cure Wounds doesn't, I don't think. I, think it, I don't seem to have my pretty sure first level spells in. I think it was a D8 plus the uh, your spellcasting ability modifier, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. Well, I got happen. my D8 and I got my plus four from the spellcasting, so six would probably be just, right for me. I probably just didn't add my plus two into when I made the well when the character was made. That's all right. Yeah, but what spells do you need yet? Well, I have uh, some first level spells. Yeah, which uh, ones? Healing word, uh, fairy fire, and thunder wave. Oh no, they're they're on there. I have them on there for you. Oh, they just popped up. I they weren't there before. At least on my screen. I could see the cantrips, but uh, now I can see them. But I'm also going to go cast five points of Lay on Hands on a uh, Tragic. Because okay. that falls with Tragic, if you ask me. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, weird. Who needed some healing yet? I have two points left, but I think somebody else got hurt as well, right? We all did. We all hit. We all fail at climbing. Okay. I'm going to cast another spell. And... It's going to take 10 minutes, though. Okay. You have 10 minutes. Uh, prayer of Healing. Prayer of Healing will allow me to heal, basically, um, uh, three key creatures. No, up to six. So, if I cast that, it will heal everybody. Can we say the 10 minutes passed? Yep. Go for it. All right. I'm doing hey. it to each one. Sounds good. Hey, pay the oh. toll. How are you this evening? Did Thank I just you, hit you? <laughs> Okay, you're at three, right? Yeah, I, I think there's I no way like that I'm... everyone everyone's going to be at, at full after this. There's, uh... Yeah. So, you're all at max hit points once again Thank after the prayer of healing takes hold. So, uh, what would you like to do? Um, I think it's getting pretty late in the day, isn't it? Is the sun going down? It's, it's, it's got starting to go down, but it's still there's still sunlight out. Okay. Shall we try climbing the mountain again? Well, I think we should try to get somebody up there uh, that can drop a rope down and help the rest of us. Who would be our best climber? Um, that's a good question. It's how, a climbing. how high up does it look like it is? Uh, about 75 feet. Well, that's quite a climb. Well, my dex is not great, so. Maybe we should go around and find a better way to access it. It actually looks like there isn't going to be, like, an easier route. Uh, one way or another, you'd have to climb to get up there. Um, this, this little outcropping um, that gives kind of a landing to that cavern, um, it... It pretty much comes up right flush with the mountain facing. Well, if somebody wants to go up, I can help them. Um, I'm pretty good at climbing. Who said that? To do it. Uh, that'd be me. Big uh, white scaly boy over here. You're talking about Yaba? No. Uh, Dragonborn it's, boy. Yeah, Selvin. Okay, yeah, I can't 
see <laughs> that well. Uh, um, right. Okay, then I'm going to cast um, Guidance. This is Cantrip. Um, for the next minute, he can add a D4 to any one of his ability checks, and he can do it either before he goes or after he rolls the check. Thank you. I'm also going to need some extra rope. I only got 50 feet of rope. I need maybe a little more. If someone wants to supply me with some rope. I don't know if I brought rope. I should have. Yeah, I got 50 feet. I I think I have uh, rope, rope too. All right. So I guess I'll make the climb. Yeah, go for it. Uh, strength athletics check, and then you've got guidance. Yeah. Hey, well, Octavius53, like thank it. you for the follow. I appreciate that. Yeah, just, in, just in case. Extra. Little extra. So the little extra makes... You already were going to make it, but now you made it look easy. Uh, so you uh, kind of shimmy your way up there, and a lot of people declared that they had rope. I don't know whose rope you took, but uh, you have enough rope that you were able to drop that down. And uh, all of the remaining characters, uh, basically the effect of that rope coming down... Uh, it lowers the DC for you to climb up there. So now DC 10 check strength athletics. You guys can do it. I believe in you. Or, sorry, it's really uh, bad. DC, DC it's really 8. Bad. Oh, and it's ac acrobatic. Oh. Uh, athletics. Athletics. Good. I'm better at that. Okay, it looks like that so poor I'm... turtle uh, comes falling down, and he's back. He's stuck on the back of his shell, and there's nobody down there to tip him back up. <laughs> so, uh, Yaba, you take uh, three points of damage. So everybody gets up there except you. Looks like yeah, Yaba doesn't climb very well. Turtles, I don't think, do. I can go back down and help him. Can assist. Can can I use my uh, can I use my quarter staff to kind of push myself over? Sure. <laughs> I I can do it. I can do it. No need to come back down. All right, Yaba. How are you gonna get up there? I'm I'm gonna try and climb again. All right, give me another strength athletics check. You got this, Yala. DC 8. Okay, he makes yeah. it with a 10. You climb all the way up, and you get to uh, this, this small landing, um, and then there is a cavern um, in front of you. And We're going to switch maps at this point and uh, come off the grid, or come off the, the, the hex crawl and into a different map so unfortunately the grid on this is not great uh, we'll just have to deal with that best we can but you've all climbed up here and you can see that uh, there is a, a small cavern that you spotted earlier uh, probably eight feet tall about uh, maybe the same distance wide um, that uh, gives way into the uh, the rock wall. And you can see that kind of draped in front of the cavern entrance there, uh, recessed into the mountain wall, there is this kind of curtain of stitched together leathers. Seems to be some kind of makeshift door. Or whatever lives inside. Well, that doesn't look good. Is there any noticeable like foot tracks going into the cave or the entrance? Sure. Uh, give me a survival check. DC ten. Oh boy. Survival. As we were walking it up there, yeah, but I healed you. 
Yeah, what, you look what over. Was that? You, yes. Selvin, you look around and you can see that there, there definitely are some prints in the mud, in the earth. Um, they look like basically like humanoid uh, feet, but just like the trees, several times larger. Maybe like a size fifteen shoe size. <laughs> I relate to the group. Uh, whatever's in there, we're not alone here. But they do look humanoid, you said? Yeah, you're guessing based on um, kind of the, the traffic patterns that they're bipedal creatures. Um. How do you think we Can should... Can you tell uh, me these prints? Oh yeah, they're right there. They're pretty big. They're a little smaller oh, than my feet, okay. but uh, pretty big. Well, I don't like this. I think we should go about approaching this. Um, I like to. But the one preacher we've met so far is Yaba, and he's been nice. I am not a native of the island. That's very fair. Also, the island's called the Isle of Dread. Uh, I wouldn't want to dread on anything that's here. How long have you been here, Yaba? Uh, I've been here a long time, but I have not traveled the island. I pretty much stayed where the near the coast where I was. Um. Although my 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 druid friend had traveled extensively, but he never talked about it too much, so I don't know uh, what to expect. Well, should we try to find another cave and just skip this one? I mean, we got people relying on us back on the coast. Wouldn't hurt to at least check it out. Um. Okay, who's gonna go up and check it out? I can go up and check it out. I'm sneaky like that. Are there any uh, places for us to hide up here, or is it pretty flat? It's pretty flat. There's not really any vegetation or anything to to hide behind. Uh, this outcropping that you're standing on. Um, probably only maybe 60 feet in circumference, and then, a, and then the drop off from the cliff where you climbed up. So, Taragic, you are, oh, go ahead. Oh, so I was going to say, I would agree with, uh, I would agree with Taragic at least looking ahead with us. The email outside while he does his thing. So, Tarajik, you're going to kind of go ahead and be like forward scout to see what's going on. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, stealth check. Okay. Um, so, you manage to um, kind of maybe use your dagger to kind of like pull this curtain aside a bit and uh, you make your way in a little bit further um, doing so you find that there is another identical curtain of leathers stitched together in front of you um, All right. if, you'd, if you'd like so to buy um... oh, go ahead. no uh, tell me what you would like to do um, so I'd like to kind of turn around and signal for people to crouch in and um and i kind of like tap the tap the curtain and then i kind of give like a two like there's like a second one whether they read any of that doesn't matter i'm signaling them come closer sounds good 
So you're you're just five feet closer. Uh, just that there's a second tier of of uh, leathers. If you'd like to move that aside quietly, go ahead and give me another stealth check. Okay. Okay, as you uh, push this aside, um, you notice that there's, or you hear kind of like some jangling of like bone and maybe like glass beads or something. There's some like noisemakers on this one, uh, but you quickly, um, as you hear them jangle, kind of grab hold of the uh, leathers and pull it taut so that it kind of like muffles the sound and it seems like it stops almost immediately as you do that. And then you come across, there's a third leather tarp. Um, give me a perception check at this point. All right. Uh-oh. Um, you don't really notice anything as you move forward. Your uh, heart's kind of beating a little bit fast because you had a close call with that last... Uh, um, that last curtain, and so uh, your, your your perception isn't quite what it would be, but you see you got a third curtain. I'm going to attempt to do the same and just see if I can take a peek in there. Sounds good. One last stealth check. Okay. Uh, you've kind of perfected this at this point, and you pull it aside um, so that you can get uh, a view into the next room. And what you see is um, an area, um, there's a big roaring fire in the center, um, kind of kind of a big fire uh, pit. There's kind of the smell of smoke kind of wafts over you as you uh, pull the curtain aside. Um, there are several uh, kind of makeshift bedrolls uh, of animal furs, uh, things that look like I don't know, maybe some kind of like a a, a tiger print uh, a fur covering and a couple of others that look like they must be from, I don't know, maybe, maybe bears, uh, something. But all fur-bearing animals, not like the leathers that you just pulled aside. Um, and there are five um, very strange-looking humanoids in this room. Um, none of them seem to have noticed you. Um... And they all seem to have their gaze focused on, it looks like maybe a, a body has been, that has had a, a, some cloth draped over it. And there are torches stuck in the ground that kind of ring this prone humanoid on the ground. Uh, we'll say the body of the thing is... If I can get my mouse to work properly, is kind of standing or laying prone on the ground right in that spot there. Okay. And um, then there are cavern entrances off of this first room. So I don't think I have an opportunity to walk all the way back through that and tell them about it. So I'm going to. Now these leathers, they're not preventing any sound from my uh, friends hearing me. So if if I can speak loudly enough, maybe they can hear that where I am. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna, so I'm gonna attempt to go in there and peacefully um, try to talk to them. Okay, uh, so you go in and make your presence known. Um... Yep. All five of these creatures, you get in, you can see they all kind of, they're all male, and they're all very, they have kind of like really crazy looking beards, and long hair, and uh, they all look almost, I don't know, maybe maybe somewhat simian in, in look, you know? These are Neanderthals, they're, they're an earlier evolution of human and uh, they all grab spears as you approach. They're wearing kind of fur loincloths. And as you approach, they grab and very like kind of hostile motions. They um, start making sounds. 
and, and, and I put my hands up and I say, and I'm loudly enough for um, my friends to hear me. I say, hold on, hold on. It's, it's okay. It's okay. And I put my head down and my hand up. What I know about maybe Simeon's what I, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then, uh, and I'm trying to calm them down while also alerting my friends that I am inside. Okay. Um, give me a charisma skill check at disadvantage. So I'm going charisma, not like persuasion, right? It could be persuasion if you have it. At advantage. I don't know how I do that, so I'm just going to roll them twice. Okay, first one looks good. Let's see what the second one looks like. Okay. Um, so they don't attack you right away, which is maybe a good thing, but even though you're kind of coming in in somewhat of a um, submissive maybe kind of approach, um, they all, these two, uh, move forward and have their spears kind of pressed forward in that five foot space in between you and them. And they seem to be like gesturing out. And I think you're muted. I sure am. So I think I'm going to back out to my friends and just keep backing out past the beads, making as much noise, not trying to be sneaky, I'm just trying to back away. And are they following me? Um, you don't get to the sense that they're following you, no. They seem like they just post up, kind of right where they are, and um, you don't really hear them withdraw from that spot as you progress past the, the curtains and back out onto the ledge. All right, so I come back out and uh, explain everything I heard or saw. So there's like these um, savages or apes or I, I don't know how to explain it, but um, there's five of them in there. I think they have a dead body in there and um, they saw me. I, you heard me and um, I don't think they want us in there. Are you sure the body was dead? Um, it had like a cloth over the body, I and mean, that's 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 what we do. I'm sure maybe that's what they do as well. It's laying in the dirt. If you want a picture of what the caveman looks like, you just scroll over to the right side of your map. Uh, it sounds like it's their home, so. Maybe we shouldn't disturb them. Yeah, we probably should find another place. Wouldn't harm at least asking if we could hunker down here for at least a day? I don't know. If they'd be they would... up for it. I don't know if they would speak our language, but I'm, I would be afraid to continue walking and only fall into more little homes here. Maybe we need to. I don't know. Well, I prefer we keep this as peaceful as possible. I mean, there's also, there's never any harm in asking, at least. If they say no, we just take our leave. Okay, so go, ask go ask them. Go on in. What was that? Go ask them. Uh, or I can really just shout them out here and just say hello. And also work. I mean... Some calls out your door and says hello. Would you go out there? Um, they didn't seem threatened by me. They, they, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just, um, just little compared to them. And they were pointing you spears at me, but they didn't, they didn't strike me or attempt to attack me. Uh, maybe I should go back in there and just kind of lure them out. I don't think. I think there's a language barrier, but well, you also walked into their home. To be fair, uh, there's barely even a door here. It's still up. It's still a door. a door. Well, why don't you shout for them, and maybe they'll come out. 
I don't think it's a great idea, but I don't think we have much options. So I shall. Oi! Um, all right. Uh, you shout oi, and uh, a few minutes later, uh, the five uh, uh, figures that you saw kind of come out, and uh, all five of them grab hold of you, Terejik. They're all grabbing you, and, like, they're trying to pull you into the cavern. Well, they're not killing you. <laughs> Um, we'll follow you in. See if they like that. All right. I do not resist. I I take uh, my team's advice and I allow them to take me. All right. So they um they all drag you back into the cavern and um they kind of throw you on the ground, pretty much like right where the body is. Oh, good, good. And one of them like puts his knee like on the back of your. Like just under your neck, um, but there's a there's another figure in here um, at this point. Um, uh, one second, we'll just drop this A on here. There's a there's another man on the other side of the room, kind of standing near the fire, uh, older, more hunched back, and he's wearing a kind of like a, a crown of bone. And he's kind of squinting at you. He's hairier than the others, too. Um, and his fingernails are all kind of, like, overgrown and kind of curling in on themselves. And he's looking at you as you uh, get thrown on the ground. And he points one of his one of his crooked fingers at the body on the ground. And he goes, Um, uh, um... Do you, does this person need help? Does he need healing? Uh, I do like a like a over the heart, like a rubbing my hands and on the heart, like you can feel more pressure like on your neck for just like a second, like whatever you're doing. I don't know, maybe it's like a defensive gesture or something to them. Yeah. But they 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 kind of rough you up a little bit more, and then this this old man or this this elder Neanderthal he comes he comes closer, and he points again at the body. And you see him, uh, he points at, like, a wound. He kind of, like, withdraws some of the cloth, maybe to, like, help expose. And you can see there's another Neanderthal man there. Um, And he points at its neck. And you can see there's some kind of, there's two, like, puncture wounds, like, in its neck. And there's, like, these, its veins are very much um, enlarged and blackened or darkened. Like some kind of, like, poison or something had coursed through its body. He says, um, so, uh, I think he wants you to bring him back to life. Well, I can't do that. Can you do that? No. Is he um, so, can, I, can I just kind of quietly, kind of slowly reach over, or are they just going to jam me into the ground when I kind of reach on my belly? I'm reaching over just to like kind of feel for heat or any kind of pulse. Uh, it seems like the guy that has you allows you to do that you can feel that it's cold the skin is very cold and then um kind of you kind of get whiplash as you're brought up onto your feet by the man uh that's holding you down um and these two kind of grab you and are are carrying you off this way um the three tribal warriors right there by magnus they all have their spears out and they seem to like uh, create a barrier between you entering into the cavern. But they're not attacking. How dark is this cave in here? Uh, it's not dark right now because of the fire. Okay. So these two seem to be pushing you into this uh, cavern over here, and you all see the the elder Neanderthal is is making his way behind. Um, I don't like that they're taking him away. Just to get it out of the way. Do any of you speak the common tongue? Anyone? I you do. see they're, they're like, they're holding their spears up. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Let's take it easy <laughs> Is the there. guy, is the A guy following them? 
Yeah, the the elder the elder is following into the other cavern where they're taking Tragic. Well, I don't think we have much choice. Cast a spell. I'm gonna. Okay, here we go. Magnus, you're casting a spell. Yeah, I'm casting a hold on the eight guy. Okay, uh, go ahead, and I guess you need a roll for me for the old man. Uh, I rolled an 18, so I think he's probably okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to guess he is. So as you do that, we will roll initiative because a oh, huge boy. brouhaha uh, breaks out. <laughs> um, oh, no. Oh, no, that's not good. And I gotta add one thing on here. Well, there was another spell I wanted to cast, but that did immediate damage. <laughs> and I was just trying to maybe scare them a little bit. I'm gonna switch out this token where the A is for the actual token. We rolled the first initiative, right? Uh, or yeah, that's... Roll that's fine. You guys can roll your own initiatives on this one. It looks like most yep. of you have. Uh, okay. So... Uh, the old man kind of like, he feels that something tried to grab hold of him and, and paralyze him. So he uh, quickly uh, turns around and um, he grabs, uh, he, he kind of uh, bends down and grabs an old bone club that was is laying nearby. And he comes and makes his way over 5, 10, 15... 20, uh, and he just stands here, and he's pointing at Magnus, he goes, hur, hur, shur, shur, and he's like making a smashing motion, maybe, uh, trying to inspire his, 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 uh, his, uh, his clan, uh, folk here, and then it is Yaba, what would you like to do? I would like to, uh, rush forward and try and just like a football player and plow through the the group there. All right. You want to try to push one of these uh, guys back? Well, Yaba's got carrying a lot of weight, so he's got a, he's got a lot of force to, uh, to contend with. He weighs 450 pounds. All right. So you're going forward. Tribal Warrior 5, uh, you're going to try to push him back. Give me a strength athletics check. All right. It's not a great roll on your part, but it beats him. So uh, you've got him grappled. Um... So we're going to say that you've moved five feet. Uh, I'll let you move him at double speed, wherever you would like to push him. Just so you, uh, straight backwards. Straight back, you can push yeah. him to about there. All right. Magnus, it is your turn. If I move to there, is um, number three going to get an attack of opportunity? Uh, mm, yeah. Yes. Um, okay. I'm not going to move there then this turn. Uh, I'm going to attack a uh, two with my longsword. All right. That attack will miss. I will take a second attack using my War Priest ability. I had to mark that off. Okay. 
long sword. We'll try that again. Oh, I suck today. And that was As a bonus. I hate casting this. As a bonus action, I'm putting Spiritual Hammer up. All right. And if I remember, I get to attack this round. Yep. Uh, there's a token for you, so you can move it wherever you'd like. It's going to attack um, the leader. Ooh. And it properly missed us. Roll a d6. All right, just a miss. Okay, and then I'll pass my turn. Uh, Grim, it is your turn. Oh, I think we both hit the button. <laughs> How, what, what kind of action is it to take off armor? Uh, depends on the armor. It typically will take more than one action. In some cases, it takes several minutes. Um. What, what kind of armor are you wearing? Leather. Um... I think it's like a minute. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Not a rule I look up very often. But I think you're right, I think it is a minute for a letter. Light armor is one minute. Okay, then I will not do that, because that would be a long Yes. <laughs> I will move forward and pull out a scimitar. And I will attack Tribal Warrior 2. You make contact with his uh, body. Roll some damage. Oh yeah, big, big gash right down his front, blood falling, dripping down his front and pooling out onto the uh, earthen ground. That will be all. Alright, Selvin, it is your turn. Alright, I'm gonna move a little closer. So I assume I, as far as I can get is probably right about here. That's probably and, true. And uh, in accordance to my oath, I'm not going to try and kill anyone. I'm just going to try and take him out as non-lethal as possible with my flail. So I'm going to target, uh, let's see, number two, if I did that correctly. And uh, just try and knock him out with a flail. Just try and chip him up and then make him bang his head by accident. Sounds good. So, All right, uh, 17 will hit. And uh, roll damage. Trying to use as non-lethal as possible. I don't want to kill anyone. So you knock him out. You, you're able to bludgeon him, uh, kind of just knock him upside the head, and he drops to the ground. Uh, and for that, can't really do much for a bonus action at this point, and I guess I'll end my turn. All right. Tragic, it is your turn. Um uh, by the way, uh, what you see um <laughs> maybe this makes it all somewhat comical. Um what you see where they were taking you was into this cavern where you see um there's big kind of leather uh uh skins that have been bleached in some way. Uh, they're kind of spread out like canvases all around uh, this cavernous room, and you see several Neanderthals with um, looks like crude-looking brushes that they're dipping into gourds 
and uh, kind of hollowed out skulls, paints, and they were painting images. It was like kind of a you know crude artist's studio of the Neanderthals that they were taking you to. Uh, you you can see one of them is painting. Uh, it looks like a battle scene of a Neanderthal that looks a lot like the guy that's laying on the ground over there. Uh, well, the one with the fang marks, and he's fighting these like spider-like creatures. All right, <clears throat> not sure what I should do. Maybe I should prevent this fight from getting. Uh, but they're pulling me into this room, right? Um, at this point, um, you can tell that their grips are kind of loosening, and their gaze, they're, they're turning their attention to the battle that's happening behind you. Okay. Um, so, ooh, I don't know what to do. Um... I'm going to attempt to uh, reason. Oh, I, can't, I can't reason. I'm going to attempt to uh, take down one of the guards that's holding me uh, non lethally. Sounds good. And uh, to do so, I'm going to take my rapier, which is wrapped in that uh, red scarf, and I'm just going to toss the scarf onto the, the floor and then. Gonna like attack the leg or something. Sounds good. So sneak attacking the rapier. Since they've looked away and they're standing next to each other. And the nine. That will miss. See, my heart wasn't in it. Alright. The tribal warriors will now go. Um Tribal Warrior 1 was holding on to you, Tarajik. Um, he, uh, they do have pack tactics. He pulls out, uh, well, he's got a spear in hand, so he's going to try to attack you with that. Hits you. And deals. Six points of damage. Tribal Warrior 2 is unconscious. All right, the third one here is attacking Magnus. No advantage for him. A 19 hits. And he deals two points of damage. Tribal Warrior 4 is attacking you, uh, Tered... Well, actually, um, he's going to peel away. Uh, would you like to take an attack of opportunity? You're muted. Oh, so, yeah, so I'm going to attempt to um, opportunity attack him just so he cannot hurt my friends. That'll hit. Oof, all right, you deal nine points of damage to him. Feeling that, uh, you could tell he was probably going to go after Yaba, but you attack him, um, and he's he's wounded a bit. He stumbles back towards you, and he makes an attack with his uh, spear. Uh, Fifteen hits. He deals seven points of damage to Tarajik, who goes down. Tribal Warrior 4 uh, is grappled by you, um, Yaba. He, um... Let me just look at something quick.
this went south pretty fast. Oh boy. All right, he's going to try to hit you with his spear, uh, Yaba. Uh, but he misses. All right, the Neanderthal leader, the old leader. He's got his bone club in hand, and um, he will attempt to make a swing at um, – he's actually going to step over uh, the body of his, the fallen. He's, he's very angry at uh, – his attention seems to be on Magnus. Uh, he's going to take a swing with his – that bone club that he picked up and he gets a 25 to hit and takes a swing right across the noggin seven points of damage um yaba it is your turn um i'm going to bonus action cast lately um on my quarter staff um, that will make my quarter staff, um, a 1d8 with a plus six to attack. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to swing that at the, uh, Neanderthal leader there. Okay. Uh, how do I roll that? Because I wouldn't have a, a, a plus four. I'd have a plus six to uh, use the quarter staff now. I just rolled a d20 and, uh, and then a, a d6. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it just it just doesn't start rolling. Okay, twenty. Oh wait, what, um, what was the D six for? I don't understand. Uh, because my quarter staff would have a plus six because it's got the shillelagh on it. Sure. So, uh, but what is the D six for? Because you just add a plus six. You're just adding your spell casting modifier, right, to the the hit roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you have a twenty three to hit. That'll hit. I have a what? I have a twenty. Didn't you say that your spell casting modifier? Uh, so you're using wisdom, right? So your wisdom modifier plus oh. the proficiency bonus. Oh, I see. I see that. The plus uh, uh, that plus D6, six, six, just plus never plus mind six. about the D6. Yeah, 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 it would be, yeah. Okay, uh, now I uh, the, the quarter staff for damage is uh, 1D8 plus 4. Uh, well, are you using a shield? Yeah. So 1D6. I think it's plus, 1D8 if you're using two a hand no, I'm talking about because of the shillelagh. Oh, oh, oh. The chorus that normally would take a D8, but he casts a spell and then making it okay. a D8. So roll a D8. Whoa, thanks for the jam, And that's man. plus four, so eight damage. Eight damage to the leader. Very nice. Hey, thanks for the cheer. Appreciate it. Gemdor is hungry. Om nom nom. Uh, anything else, Yaba? No, that'd be it then. All right. Father Magnus Bane, it is your turn. Uh... 
it could be that you were talking, but you might be muted. I see the little mute symbol. You are wise. <laughs> well, this has escalated more than I wanted it to, but Magnus does not know how to knock somebody out and hold his punch, so he's going to go longsword against um, the leader. All right, that is a hit. Oh my god, I actually hit. And... I'm going to use my War Priest again to attack him a second time with the Longsword. Mm. <laughs> I know, four by six. I got all my 20s out of the way at the beginning. And oh, that's not six. good. Six. Let's see what happens. Nice knowing you guys. Father, no. Hmm. Oh, man. Um, what was your... Your weapon was your longsword? Yes. Okay. So, um, on the swing where you hit and you did some damage, um, it kind of pierces through his skin a little bit, the tough skin of this old Neanderthal leader, and when you jerk the sword back out, um, it's kind of clumsy. Uh, it doesn't go, it doesn't come out as easy as it went in, and you kind of, the pommel of the blade, uh, punches right into your skull, and you knock yourself unconscious. You will remain unconscious um, until you either take damage or at the start of your turns you will be able to make a con save. Okay. <laughs> this went so, so fast. Um, well, the good news is my spiritual hammer stays up. It's not a concentration spell. So it, it just hangs but out it, there. It, it just hangs there because I can't direct it. So, I'm done. All right. Next up, we've got Grim. It is your turn. I will pull out my second scimitar and attack the Neanderthal leader with the first. That'll be a hit. Nine points. Nice. And then as a bonus action with my offhand, I will attack with my other scimitar. All right, and that one will miss. That will be my turn. Selvin, it is your turn. Uh, is there any way I can get through the group at all? I know I got a couple of people in my way. Is there any way I can get probably behind them? Um, you, well, you could move for uh, double movement through Grim's spot and then come out on the other side. Uh, seems like it's a little uh, too clustered. I think I'll just uh, stick with my violent pacifist ways and try and knock out the uh, Neanderthal leader. Okay. With the flail. That will hit. Uh, and I will not smite. I feel like it's not really necessary. Oof. Making this as non-lethal as possible with a very lethal weapon. Yeah, it's a uh, bone crushing. Uh, you can hear the sound of his bones kind of cracking under the weight of uh, your uh, flail. As it crushes into his flesh. Ooh. And I guess with my movement, I'll stand over Father Magnus. <laughs> Alright. It's probably 
best I could do, and that will end my turn. Tarajik, you are unconscious. You make a death saving throw, which you succeed. And then it becomes the Tribal Warrior's turn. Tribal Warrior 1 runs forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And he's going to try to attack uh, Yaba. Misses. Er, that should be an advantage because he's got pack tactics. Uh, but a 15 also misses. Tribal Warrior 2 is unconscious. Tribal Warrior 3 um, is going to make an attack on Father Magnus. Uh, but misses. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhat, it's kind of a blessing and a curse. Um, yeah. <laughs> I stay uh, unconscious. Tribal uh -huh. Warrior 4 is uh, wounded, but um, you see him go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He runs down this hallway and out of sight. Oh, no. Yeah. And you hear, <laughs> you hear some kind of a pantomime happening down there, some communication of... Uh, the, the battle that is taking place. Tribal Warrior 5 is attacking Yaba with advantage. And 8 misses. Alright. These, uh... The creatures from the other hall, uh, the painters, are all grabbing weapons and moving out. 5... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, this one dashes to get there. Spear in hand. This one dashes to get there. This one dashes. They're all surrounding Yaba. And... This one dashes to right here. The Neanderthal leader uh, is looking pretty rough, um, but he's still pretty angry at uh, the spell casting. The, you know, they don't necessarily understand spell casting, and so to see it, to see what uh, Magnus did, kind of freaked them out a little bit. He's still holding on to that ire. He's trying to try to bash, and he finally hits. He hits Magnus. Low damage. Low, low damage. Club. Low damage. No low damage. It is seven points, and you are no longer yeah. unconscious. I can take that. I guess. So, uh, actually it would be more damage, because that would have been a critical hit because of the unconsciousness. Okay. So it's an extra five points of damage. You're still at... You want me to add it on, or you want to... Oh, you got I, it, okay. I, I just dropped it. So, um, Ben, and you, so you're awake, you're prone. Yaba, it is your turn. Uh, since these uh, are uh, quite primitive individuals um, and they were concerned with the body um, there with that uh, spider bite, um, Yaba is going to turn into a giant spider in hopes that it might scare them away. Okay. Um as you use your wild shape to do that, why don't you give me an intimidation check? Come on, Yabba. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. I will have uh, these tribal warriors make an opposing check against that intimidation check to see if they have uh, a fear effect. <coughs> I'm just going to go kind of right down the line. Uh, give each of them a... We'll say this will be a wisdom check. So number one is frightened. Next one in line is no longer with us. Next one is afraid as well. So one, three, not four, one, three, one, three, five, six, seven. <laughs> Probably be easier for me to remember the ones that uh, don't have it. So five and eight are fine. Five, eight, and nine are fine. The rest are, have the fear effect. Just gonna pop that on. All right. Uh, anything else? I think that's your action to Wild Shape. I, I believe Wild Shape is is a bonus action. Is it for you? Depends. I'm Circle of the Moon, so it's Combat Wild Shape uh, is a, a bonus action uh, oh. for uh, Circle of the Moon. Oh, for some reason I thought you, I thought in the character sheet they gave me your Circle of Dreams. No, Circle of the Moon. Okay. We'll have to make some changes to your fantasy ground character. Uh, if you, no, it's 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 on the sheet that I sent email to you. Um, I'm going to take a uh, a bite attack. All right. That will miss. Anything else? Um, no, that would be all then. All right. Father Magnus, you are awake, conscious, and prone. What would you like to do? Well, I'll take half movement to stand. I don't want to hit him that hard. Um... I'm going to cast a spell, uh, Sacred Flame, at um, their leader. All right, he fails. Okay, so he's still up. Uh, looks like he is. He, he seems like he's bracing himself, uh, kind of against the wall, but he's still on his feet, just barely. Uh, my spiritual hammer behind him is going to attack. And misses. I'm done. All right. Grim, it is your turn. I will once again swing at the Neanderthal leader. I will attack with the other one as a bonus action with my off.
Oh, please finish him. Please finish him. <laughs> All right. Your blade cuts through his hide armor. Blood pools out. He reaches and grabs for the wound. He goes, Rrr! Rrr! and he just falls down and bleeds out onto the ground. I will then move into the spot where he was at. That will be my turn. All right. Selvin, it's your turn. Uh, Fantasy Grounds is being a little iffy with me right now. It's a little slow for some reason. But, uh... Ah! Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just move over to the space that was previously occupied by Grim, and... How much can I get at the breath weapon? Oh, I want to do its uh, diagonal towards the northeast to the guy that's trying to find me to the corner. It's a 15-foot cone, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, from there you'd get uh, 6, 1, and 9. Alright. Oh, Can't really seem to find it it's on my character thing that I'm doing it, but it's a uh, DC 10 uh, constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll start with uh, Tribal Warrior 6. He fails. Next one in line, Tribal Warrior 1 fails. And the last one there gets a 13. What's the save DC on that? Uh, it's just 10. 10, okay. So 6 and 1 will take full damage, and number 9 will take half. Uh, I'll just roll two of the uh, sixes and go off of that. Nine. So nine damage, and whoever succeeds takes four points of cold damage. If that means anything. Right. And uh, with my bonus action, if I'm not mistaken, I think bless is a bonus action. Let's see. Uh, now it's an action. No, then now uh, that'll have my turn. All right. Tragic rolls a death saving throw, and it's a failure. So one success, one failure for those of you at home keeping track. Um, I think there is an EXP item. You could help him out with a nat 20 on a death saving throw. All right. It turns over to the tribal warriors. A lot of very frightened tribal warriors. Uh, Yabba Dabba, uh, tribal warrior one is moving out of your reach. Do you want to take an attack of opportunity? Um, yes. All right, go for it. That's a hit. Okay, the damage is um, 1d8 plus 3. All right, go ahead and roll that. All right, you whap him in the back of the head, crushing his skull. He... Falls forward and face plants. Um, he is dead. Tribal Warrior 2 is unconscious. Tribal Warrior 3 um, is frightened. And is moving away from both Magnus and Grim. Um, I will... Magnus, would you like to take an attack of opportunity? Um, it's the only one I'm probably going to get this round, so yes, I would like to take an attack of opportunity. I won't hit him, but I'll take it. Alright. That will hit. Hey, I hit.
three points. <laughs> Perfect. Either I miss them or I do minimum damage. So he's he's fleeing away, and uh, you get kind of a catch a, a piece of him as he's running away. It nicks him. Um, and he moves 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Somewhere over here, out of sight. Uh, Tribal Warrior 4 is also frightened. He already ran away. Number 5 um, is not frightened and is by Yaba. He's going to take an attack with his spear. He gets a 21, which hits... Dealing two points of damage. Tribal Warrior 6 is a f is frightened. He's going to try to run away. Grim, would you like to take an attack of opportunity? Yes, I would. Selvin, would you like to take an attack of opportunity? As non lethally as I can. Just try and trip him up. Ooh, a nat one. Roll me a d6. If you roll a five or a six, something really bad could happen. Can't wait to sub my own toast, my own flail, the most dangerous weapon of them all. Ooh, close. Um, but luckily it's just a miss, and he moves five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Does Spiritual Hammer get an attack of opportunity? Um... It doesn't say either way in the spell. However you want to rule, I don't care. I'm going to say no. Fair enough. When it's really desperate for the players, then I say yes. But I'm not sure it's really desperate right yet. <laughs> so, he runs away. Um, Tribal Warrior 7 um, is frightened. Oh, He's frightened. Gonna try to get out of here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. They're all freaking out because there's a, a spider looking guy in the room and they don't seem to like that none too much. Um. Tribal Warrior 8 is by Yaba and is going to take an attack at advantage. Misses. Number 9 also moves up, tries to attack Yaba. Uh, 21 will hit. Deal 7 points of damage. All right, uh, Yaba, it is your turn. There's a very loud uproar that is happening in the northeast cavern. Lots of and you hear banging of like clubs against each other. Almost uh, some grunting and growling that is happening in unison from maybe a dozen or so voices. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we should get out of here. Um. <laughs> um. I'm going to uh, do a a bite attack uh, um just 
just so you know, Alex, uh, are you, you're taking putting damage on my regular character rather than the spider character. I suppose that's true. Um, yeah, you're going to have to get, I guess you're going to have to give me some more info on things, you know. I was, I was marking down the damage on the spider. Um, okay. We'll, we'll have to figure he, out how to do that in fantasy grounds, I suppose. Uh, but as okay. long as you're tracking it manually, that's fine. Um, we have to figure but out I, how much damage that you've your character on here has taken that it shouldn't have. I think I had two points of damage uh, on Yaba himself. Okay. So anyway, spider form has taken seven. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. I'm attacking with a, a, a bite attack uh, in the one that's in, well, yeah, I'm going to attack uh, uh, the, the one in front of me with a bite attack. Yeah. So then is that modifier and everything right for your spider form? Yeah, plus five. Plus five, okay, that'll hit. And the uh, the 1d8 plus three, so. So that'd be, what, 11 points of damage then? Okay. Um... He goes down. What type of spider did you uh, transform into, by the way? Uh, it's a giant spider. Um, it's a um, it's a lar large beast. Uh, it has a challenge rating of one, which is which is what the circle of moon can do a a, 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 a challenge rating of of one. All right, we're gonna say that you kind of enlarge and push. These, oh, that turtle got big. Push that one over like that. It's a big turtle. All right. Anything else, spider turtle? Is he a druid? Yeah, he is. Ah, Rob Tui has a really good program, a module that would help you with that spider switch. Uh, any anything else, Yaba? Or what is it? Uh, is it part of fantasy? I mean, there there are modules out there that you can buy that are designed by other people, and they do various things for you. He designed one specifically for the druid to allow you to click one button and transfer into your spider form. Anything else, Yaba? Uh, no, I think that's it for now. All right. Magnus. Casting spell. Healing word on our rogue over there. Tragic. It's 60 feet distance, so it's going to heal him. Sounds good. Maybe we can get out of here then. <laughs> okay. So, Tragic, you are conscious once again. Okay, and then I'm going to move my spiritual hammer to there. All right. Grim. I'm going to move around this very large spider to get to <laughs> Tribal Warrior 9. And attack him with my scimitars. First one misses. 
Roll a d6. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a six. Oh. We roll our 20s at the beginning. All our 20s and climb me a hill. Yeah. All right. It is a forceful miss. You swing. Uh. You swing so hard down that you kind of disorient yourself, and you spin around, and you you feel kind of like a a, a rush toward right to your head, and you are dazed for one round. Hmm. Selvin, it is your turn. So I believe what we heard is the consensus from the party is probably getting out of here as soon as we can. If the party would like to fill me in on that. Uh, other than that, I probably, I guess, pop Grim over here. He's looking a little days over there. I'm going to use my 30 feet movement. Probably get about there as probably as close as I can get. And not only flea whack this uh, Child Warrior number nine. 13 is a hit. And we'll just do standard damage. No smite. And he goes down unconscious. Uh, can't really do much for bonus action, so I guess that will end my turn there. All right. Taragic, you are conscious and prone. I don't, did you switch something with your microphone? You sound like really far away. How about now? Oh, better. Now we hear you. Um, so I'm going to move around here. Oh, no, I use my movement to stand up, correct? Half your movement to stand up. All right, so then I'm going to scoot in like around just like here. I'm going to throw my dagger at the last guy. Is he the only one standing in the room now? Yeah, Tribal Warrior 8 is the only one that's standing in the room. Okay, I'm going to throw my dagger. Oh, please throw my dagger. 14 will hit. All right, and... Does he have sneak? Uh, yeah, you could add uh, sneak attack damage to that. All right. Where are I? Oops. Hmm. Trying to figure out how to sneak attack again. Uh, let's see. I think we've got that sneak attack option on there. If you click the uh, magnifying glass, that little thing will expand, and then you can click the effect button. And now you can do your damage like normal, like your weapon damage. Ah. So 10 points of damage. And he, uh, the dagger, uh, spins and flies right into his jugular. And, um, you can see he's kind of reaching and he, you see like for a moment, uh, the Neanderthal is like, uh, thinking about pulling that dagger out. He's kind of coughing a little bit, but, um, he's still engaged in battle with the spider and he's still on his feet. Anything else to Rajik? Um, yeah, I'm going to do, how far does my disengage allow me to go? So you've used, uh, what, half your movement to stand up? Mm -hmm. So you have, I think, like, uh, well, what are you, halfling? Yep. So we'll say you have, uh, ten, ten more feet of movement. All right, I'll stay where I am then. Or maybe I'll I'll move like right here and just kind of use my small body size to hide. All right.
There are some warriors that are pouring out from the cavern to the northeast. So you can just see uh, kind of a whole parade of them are are just charging out like one after one another, and they're just emerging kind of right from that spot. Um, I don't know. Even though your 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 sacred weapon is there, I'm just gonna pull the token off to the side for now, so you can kind of see. Um, where all of these uh where all these guys are coming from just filing out um let's see that one's unconscious there's a number of them that are frightened and out of sight I think we've just got one left in the room. That would be Tribal Warrior 8. So Tribal Warrior 8 is going to try to hit the giant spider. Uh, 17 should hit the armor class of the spider. Yes. That's going to be nine points of damage. Yaba, it is your turn. Um, can the spider get through the that doorway there? Which doorway? Where we came in. Uh, yeah, you gotta kind of push your way through and kind of crouch, but you could get through. Okay, I'm going to disengage and start heading out. All right, what's the movement speed on the spider? Thirty. So you'd be five. I think you could get to like right there. Magnus. Magnus is going to stay right here with his long sword and yell for everybody to run past him. And then he's going to hold right there and pass his turn. All right. Anything you're doing with your spiritual weapon? I'll move it to there. That's 30. All right. Grim, uh, you had that kind of dazed effect. It becomes your turn, and the effect passes. You shake shake it away um, and kind of regain your senses for your next turn. Selvin, you're up. Uh, seeing Grim coming out of his dazed state, I want to try and help lead him out if I can. Uh, I'll probably take my action, I think, to help lead him out with my movement. Or is that just a free action? Um, you, unless you're going to, like, pull or drag him, um, he'll have to take his movement on his turn. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I'll just start pulling him out. He still looks like he's in a loopy state, so I'm gonna start just trying to pull him out of there as well. Okay, uh, and I probably me... will take an attack opportunity as well from word number ten. Give me a strength athletics check. Let's see, nineteen. Okay, uh, so you begin to uh, kind of forcefully, you know, drag Grim. Grim's kind of standing there a little bit dazed. Maybe needs some help. Um, there's a spear attack that comes. It misses you. Um, and we'll say you can move together and I'll let you kind of drag Grim to right about there. That's fair. Let's probably take my entire action to do so. So that's it. That's my turn. All right. Tragic, it is your turn. All right. I'm going to. So I'm gonna come around here, and um, and that's going to oh, and while I'm I'm just basically grabbing my rapier and um, trying to wrap it and run, so that I don't leave my scarf behind, and um, and then I'm going to use my cunning action to dash. It should get me past my friends. Yes. Uh, Tribal Warrior 8 will try to take an attack of opportunity against you. He's taking his one. Oh, you already take Oh, no, not 8. I'm sorry. 10 did. I'm sorry. My bad. And he Just gets trying to help out my friends. Oh, oh. oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh, this is really tragic. Oh. Uh. Uh, he goes die. down. <sighs> Another this is body really tragic for you. For you. And oh. then all of this is about to happen. No, I, oh boy! Oh, Ten uh, is gonna try to take an attack on Selvin. Our first Fif night on a uh, TPK. Fifteen misses. <laughs> uh, next one up is going to attack Magnus. Twenty-one hits. Of course. Three points. And twelve gets right there. An attack on Magnus. Misses. The rest of the warriors um, is kind of filtered down. Oh my, that looks horrible. <laughs> and there's one more fireball prepared. There's one more elder in the back who's uh, got a, a great club in hand, just like the other one, and then he's he's the one that's kind of he's he's banging that his club against um, uh, just an old piece of wood and he's banging, clamoring noise, kind of, you know, uh, getting getting the blood flowing, getting the rage flowing through his uh, warriors and, you know, making gestures, you know, let the, get, get the invaders out of here, get them out of our home. Um, and this is just not going good for us. Yaba, it is your turn. Yaba's going to dash out of the cave and go as far as he can. I don't know how far. Double move. Dash, so... 5, wow. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, you'd be able to probably get as far as the cliff, and you'd be able, as a spider, to pretty easily scale your way down. Maybe throw up some webbing and just you dangle yourself down. <laughs> Whoa, thanks for the jams, man! So, Yaba, you're going to have no problem. 
Magnus, it is your turn. Well, Magnus is not the type that's going to leave Tragic behind, so Magnus will try to hit 11 with the long sword. Okay, there we go. All right, five points of damage to that one. Magnus will use War Priest to hit him again, or try to. That one misses. And then the Spiritual Hammer will try to hit. Well, you have two. Oh, uh, we'll try to hit thirteen. And there. Where is my spiritual hammer? <clears throat> well, at least, at least it wasn't me. <laughs> I mean, my character. You want me to roll six? Your, yep. your god is not with you today. Luckily, oh, it's wow. a miss. Just a miss. And right. I'll pass my turn. Grim. I will put away one of my scimitars and back up a little. And that will be my turn. All right. Selvin. Well, in an attempt to try and get our lovely uh, Rokish companion out of there, I'm going to attack number 10. Now you're trying to hit me before. With the flail. A cha. That's a hit. And I will be adding Divine Smite to this to hopefully knock him out to get this guy out of here. I assume they're not fiends or undead. No. So, I believe it is my normal damage, plus initial 2d8. Okay, he... Hmm, the pacifism is over, and tribal... It warriors. definitely <laughs> is. I'm going to have to pray for this later. <laughs> oh. And I will... Uh, you can move through allies, correct? If I'm not mistaken? You can, it'll just be double movement. Yeah, Grumpy mm -hmm. DM uh, correctly identifies should play as level 4 character on Sunday. <laughs> yes. And I will... Uh, someone's gonna get, get him. I guess I move forward. Just to get closer to him. Don't have any healing for bonus action. That's my action, and then that will be my turn. Alright. Tragic. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's a success. I think uh, next time, instead of running away, I should have just tried to um, flight of hand that throat, uh, knife out of his jugular. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Tribal warriors will take their turn. Number 11 is uh, attacking Magnus. It is a hit. That might be it for Magnus. No. Six points. Nope, not it yet. One hit point left. Praise be to you, Father. You got this. Tribal Warrior 12. We only have, we only have eight more attacks. <laughs> Hits. So, Father Magnus is unconscious. Goes down. Bye, Magnus. I loved you, man. Tribal Warrior 13 is right by you, Selvin. Spear attack. Run. <laughs> and it's at advantage. They have pack tactics. Critical hit. <laughs> 11 points of damage. Tribal Warrior 14, there's a gap. He's able to get to right there, blocking your escape. 
Hack tactics. 17 so to down. Well, Seven maybe two points. of them out. Yaba, what do you do? I'm looking back and seeing that I only see one of my companions still standing. Um, I'm not, I'm kind of hesitant, but I don't think, I don't think I could, uh, you know, do anything more to help them. I, I don't know why they didn't run out guys. with this. Yeah, I, I'm not. <laughs> why didn't they follow? But anyway, I can't say anything. I'm spider yet. Um, I'm going to head down the cliff. Magnus has a success on the death saving throw. Big decision here, Grim. What will you do? If I use my scimitar to cut my leather armor in half to get it off of me, would that be would I be able to do that in one turn? Um Probably not. What, what, why do you ask? Because I didn't read my entire character sheet and forgot that I have wings. Yeah, I, I debated whether I was going to allow your character to have that uh, flying speed or not, but okay, okay, so now that I know why you're asking, I'm going to say yes. Uh, if it will, let's say you have to make a check to do it in a swift movement. Um, or just give me an attack roll. See how well you're able to make this cut. Yeah, you, you're trying, you try to cut, it's, it's going to take a little bit more work than, uh, what you had envisioned in your mind. You get you cut like like maybe like one of the the sides off, but it's just not enough to give you enough freedom to fully extend your wings to give you that that freedom to fly. I will then just move as far as I can away from this cave. Okay. So. Um. It's. It's a, it's one of those situations where uh, you get the sense that the, the, the Neanderthals are happy enough that you have gotten out of there. It doesn't seem that they are in pursuit. Um, so this, this session is going to wrap up with Yaba and Grim having successfully uh, fled from the scene. And... We will see what happens to our others that are inside. Maybe they'll just toss their bodies outside. <laughs> no, they've got another use for them. That so word is fine leathers. All right, I think it. I don't want to want it to be my clicks that do anything. Um, so oh. let, let's let's find out what the score is at. Uh, looks like Magnus is at one save, one fail. We've got our audience out there, so you know you might get somebody that helps you out here. Yeah. Um. So Magnus is one one success, one failure. Selvin is at two successes, no failures. And Taragic nice. is one success, two failures. So Taragic is very close to that uh, that type of ending that would work with his name. So let's start with Magnus. Why don't you uh, go ahead and click the button and do a, a saving throw? Father Ooh. Magnus. So Magnus is in the same I spot a new as Taragic. Father uh, Magnus, no. I'll so, say that. Selvin, let's have you 
You you make a roll. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, nope. G- gonna make it interesting. There's a failure on the board for Selvin. Tragic. You need a ten Come on. wire. Come on. Yeah. I believe in you. Yeah. Yes. A success. Two successes, two failures. Let's go back to uh, Magnus. I decline to roll. May the blessings of Pelor be upon you. I can't kill my own character. You kill him or not. Go ahead. (laughs) All right. I'll make it for you. I'm dead. Three failures. Unless we've got a very, very generous person from the audience that now wants to resurrect the character. Um, I was let's... stupid enough to go in there. I think they blew all their experience during the twenty-four hour game. No one seems to have any. <laughs> Wait, I I think think you're probably uh, right. Uh, uh, Selvin. Oh boy, I love the Dragonborn. Don't die on me yet. Yes, he is stable. Selvin is stable. Tragic. Oh, here it is. Come on, you beautiful halfling person, <laughs> you. You die on me, I'm going to kill oh. you. Oh. Dead. So, I think the narrative is that the uh, the the Neanderthals end up killing Magnus and Tragic, but they noticed that Selvin was um, not outright killing them. And so they spare his life and uh, are, are nursing him to life, maybe trying to learn something about him. But the other two die. My halfling characters just die immediately. <laughs> Buddy... I mean, I also play silly with my halfling characters. My halfling characters oh. I was rogues. And I was oh, well. Like... I tried to get you. I, I, you just, did. I had to feel it. I had to lay on hands for so long. I was going to get to you. Oh. <laughs> so it, it, this is the this is what happens when uh, there's a language barrier, right? It, it looked like a, a sinister scene. They're they were hauling Tarajik off to that other hallway, but all it was was they were... They were, tr- they were trying to defend themselves, keep keep the others at bay while they brought one, and we're going to try to communicate with them using the paintings. And then we started murdering each other. Well, I, I was... I know. It, it was a tragic, a very tragic uh, uh, piece here. Um, Boo! With it. <laughs> Uh, basically what would have happened is they were going to try to entice you to deal with what the, their spider enemies. And if you could figure out that they wanted that, then they would let you, uh, stay the night safely. I have one question. Yeah. Was the guy in the gun originally dead? Yes. Dang it. Um, I was just... Oh... He's he was a vi- a recent victim from the attack uh, that they suffered from uh, these spider creatures that they would have tried to partner with you on, um, but kind of explains why they were on edge. They they've they they've been dealing with a a separate war that had nothing to do with you and um, and they let the spider go. Well, it might be a story that picks up on Sunday, um, because I guess we need to find out what Yaba and Grimm are going to do next, so we know where the game picks up on Sunday. Well, um, after we get down... Uh, below, I'll probably um, shift out of my spider shape and probably discuss it with him. Um, you were sent here to to look for shelter. Uh, 
either we need to find more shelter or we got to go back to the coast where your your uh, other companions are. I think going back to the coast and warning them that this area is not safe would be for the best before anyone else dies. All right. We'll uh, need to head back then. Uh, but uh, perhaps we should find some food along the way. They, they're probably going to be in need of it, food and water. Uh, that is true. Uh, Yaba and Grim, go ahead and give me survival checks. All right, Yaba, uh, roll me a d6. So basically, uh, uh, Grim isn't able to really pick up on anything in Yaba. You find enough to feed the two of you, but that's it. Um, certainly not enough to help out with the crew back, um, back at the beginning of the jungle. And it's become... Uh, well, basically... we did find that... What's that? We we did find that stream, so we probably would have found water, but maybe not food. Then. Yeah, I mean, you're 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 the two of you are not able to collect enough where it's going to yeah make a difference really. Um, and it's evening, and shelter has not been secured. So the next session is going to be the long night without shelter. So that should be an interesting, uh, interesting session. Well, I have my own shelter. <laughs> it is a, uh, a, a sad ending to our second episode of the subscriber game. Oh no. I have my character idea, Alex. Two yeah. words. Undead Magnus. Undead Magnus. <laughs> Undead Magnus. No. There are some things on the island that would probably uh, be okay with uh, resurrecting a, a body and and doing some necromancy, but uh, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> well, uh, you do have a character in reserve. You had the, that halfling, Chase. Yeah, I have Chase. He's a bard, I think. Or a wizard. And, uh... I think the same is true for Chris. You've always got the, uh... <laughs> the other, uh... The other rogue that I think died, but then we made it a, a story plot that he was like an undead. Oh, my skeleton character? Yeah. <laughs> so he's always around. Otherwise, uh... Starting level is going to be level two. Um, although, Pretty sure my old character got locked in a closet somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be true. Um, all right. Well, uh, Selvin, you are still alive, and so there is still a possibility that... Um, that you're, you might return, you might be rescued in some way. I guess time will tell. Indeed it Prepared shall. To be abused, caveman Se style. Selvin's a very nice, easygoing guy. Maybe he can make something work. Uh, do you want to try to make an appeal? Are you going to try to appeal to the... Um... The Neanderthals, you know, at some point you come to, and you're bound up, and you probably are going to be in that room where the paintings are. Mm -hmm. 
what would you like to try to communicate to the Neanderthals when you come to? Uh, I'm all first of all going to try and start by at least speaking. Even though I know they speak in grunts, I'm just going to say, uh, <laughs> how would I go about this? I was speaking grunts. They are very defensive. Uh, I'm not going to be any aggressive, even though my physique is very aggressive looking being a six foot four dragonborn. Make a intelligence uh, check. Oh boy, intelligence. I'm super smart. DC 12. Oh boy, negative one. Fantastic. Hold up. Okay. 15. Ooh. So from your time uh, that you spend with them, you get the sense that even though they communicate kind of with this grunting link, uh, you know, with these noises that they make, they aren't evolved to the point that they have a language. They can still communicate, just not in the common sense of through yeah, even spoken amongst, language. Yeah, even amongst each other, they're va basically communicating via pantomime um, and certain, like, signals, like, knocking once for yes, knocking two for no, like those kinds of things. They don't have... Kind of like yeah, it's very much a charades kind of deal that they have with one another and maybe like tonal a little bit but it's not to the sophistication of a language mm -hmm. i guess i probably go about trying to make myself say not bad in the best sense not bad and try and it's my best to communicate what i am if that makes any sense i gotta okay. pull out like my my uh well i can't really pull out anything but I'll, like Look down towards my chest, and my holy symbol will be there. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you make a check. What kind of check would you like to make? Uh, persuasion, please. Okay. It's going to be at disadvantage because of the barrier. Fair enough. Disadvantage, persuasion, come on, paladin of redemption, you beautiful person, you. Okay. Uh, they 20. are pretty convinced that you're not there to harm them that you're not you think you've got them convinced that you had a misunderstanding mm -hmm. i was in a uh, house but they say anything to what well, they trying to gesture anything to me at this moment or no they start or to, they again, talking they again start to gesture towards uh the depiction of that spider-like creature. Uh, let me throw up an image for you so you can see exactly what it is now that you have some time. Because it is a little bit more than just a spider. You're getting the sense when you look at this thing. It is a spider that has six insectoid legs, but its front pair of arms are actually hands. And they depict it as if it is casting spells. Mm. And so you get the sense they, they're at war with this this species of this this intelligent creature that actually is able to conjure and knows arcane arts. And maybe that has something to do with why they were so sensitive to the fact that Magnus casts a spell. Mm-hmm. Um I guess I could for the sake of my life at this point. Uh, does the Elder look hurt at all, or is there anyone of them that look hurt? Many of them look hurt. Uh, a number of them obviously have been killed in this battle that yep. you had with them. Um, yep. Uh, I'm going to try and make a gesture to unbind me, and with my remaining... This is the same day, correct? Yes. Uh, with my remaining five points from... He well lay on hands. I'm just gonna go around and just say sorry and just give a point to anyone who needs it. I have five points. Okay. If I can at all convince them to let me heal them, they do. They allow you. You can tell that there's kind of a rapport between you and them that is starting to build, um, and they see that you are in possession of magic that is good. They've never seen that uh, before. Um. As they are experiencing it, healing, uh, <laughs> healing for the first time, 
Um, and basically what happens is you get the sense in some of the, they start to do drawings and they start to cry, try to communicate to you via that medium. Mm -hmm. And what you notice then is they're trying to communicate to you that they want you to find others to go after the spiders. And they draw some, um, they, they draw some symbols and things like that to indicate to you that if you do that, they'll provide shelter. Um, I assume I have access to my, like, my journal at least. Yes. So I'm going to start drawing pretty much how I got here. I'm just going to make big half circle and then tentacles come out of the water the best I can of how I got here and say pretty much more like more people in a sense with my amazing non-existent artistic abilities to the best of my extent. Based on your earlier check you succeed on that and they understand and they let you go to go and find your friends. Uh, um, before I go, I'm going to hand them a piece of paper with Pelor's holy symbol on it before I go and say good and then thank him and then I'll leave. All right. And as you're as you're leaving, leaving, uh, there's one of them that takes that piece of paper and they start to try to replicate it on some of the hides in that room. Um, and you're going to be able to make your way out. And so, good job. <laughs> that wasn't an easy check check to make at disadvantage, but you nailed it with a twenty. Uh, so you managed to negotiate for your life and. Um, Sunday, Sunday, the there there will be a party that will try to complete this task of uh, going after the spider creatures. So, any last questions or lingering thoughts from uh, the party members? Other than that, I guess I just said I start heading back to where our original camp was. And if if I get there alive, I'm just gonna sleep. All right. Well, I hope uh, I hope you still had fun, even though it was essentially a TPK that happens once in a while, especially in the, you know, these are these are the the difficult modules a little bit. Uh, they retain some of that uh, hardcore element from some of the original stuff. But I think we got a good story out of this. It was a story of misunderstanding um, with the natives that live here. And there might be more of that in the future. Um, that misunderstanding doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is going to be your enemy. Um, but Selvin, you salvage the day. Uh, there might be yet a way for the crew to have a safe night's rest. Um, I was envisioning if the if the crew has to sleep, man, out, you know, in the wilderness, that's going to be a gauntlet of uh, encounters with all sorts of dangerous things. Um, and as fun as that adventure would be to write, um, I, I'm sort of glad that Sullivan was able to salvage the day here, and uh, we'll get to see that that adventure with the uh, the battle with the Arani is what those creatures are called. So. So this was a uh, one of our our community campaign games. Um, thanks everybody for watching. If you ever want to get into one of these games, you certainly can um, by either supporting us via Patreon or becoming a Twitch subscriber. This game, this campaign, is a, a thank you campaign to all of those who support our channel uh, via those two methods. Um, so if you want to get into a game, you know, consider backing the Patreon. Uh, those that support at the $30 level get to uh, sign up for games uh, earlier than others, and they get to sign up for unlimited games. Those that sign uh, support at the $15 level, um, you get to sign up for two games at a time. Those that support at the $5 level, you can support. Uh, you can sign up for one game at a time. And those of you that are Twitch subscribers, um, 
you can sign up to be on the wait list for any game and if there are openings uh, 24 hours before the game you'll you'll be able to get access to the games so all right uh in terms of our schedule, we've got another one of these subscriber games happening on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So if you want to see what happens with this cliffhanger that we were kind of leaving off on, uh, you can catch catch that then. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. We will talk to you all soon.